So as we all celebrate Black History Month, how are you doing it? Here on our show, we've been lifting up black culture through interviews, highlighting trailblazers within fashion, poetry, sports, and film. But today we have a local councilwoman from Prince George's County in Maryland who says, let's not just talk about the black experience, let's live it. Hi, I'm your councilwoman, Crystal Orieva, representing District 7 here in Prince George's County, and I am so excited that we are launching our Everything Black for Black History Month. So this is going to be how do you read black, shop black, eat black in Prince George's County, and really trying to highlight District 7. Okay, District 7, and today we are doing just that. The councilwoman is joining us here on set to continue her quest to lift up black authors and encourage everyone to read black, not just this month, right, but yes. all, every month. Yes, every single day. I think the idea of this campaign is taking Black History Month, having an opportunity where people are going to have this awesome conversation about being black, black culture, and hopefully um, they can speak spread this into everyday life after Black History Month. Absolutely. And and how have your constituents responded to your to your mission? Are you getting people calling you up, stopping you in the street and saying, oh, wait, I, I can tell you about this book or this shop or this restaurant? Yeah, a lot of people are really engaging with that. I know some young people that are very uh, disconnected from politics, and they said that they saw that, oh, I love that restaurant too. <laughs> and so they're following, they're engaging, they're actually telling me about other maybe restaurants or books or shops that I might not be aware of and having that conversation. And so I think it's going to catch fire. And I'm hopeful to even launch something that has a list of how you can continue to engage and support black businesses 365 days out of the year. And it's great for families, too, because yeah. they can bring the kids around the dinner table and say, OK, we're going to have our own little book club or we're going to exactly. hit this certain restaurant or we're going to make sure we shop at this boutique and support it's black culture. Exactly that. All right. So I want to if you don't mind, I yes. want to we're going to go through some of the books that you've picked. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, full disclosure, Dakari Holland is a friend of the show, mm -hmm. okay, just how we found you. Yeah. We found Dakari through one of our security guards mm -hmm. here, um, who has just been an incredible producer for us on mm -hmm. the side. Mm -hmm. And so we brought Dakari in, and he talked about his books. Tell me how you met him and why you are lifting up this young author. Yeah, so this is something that I'm really super excited about. So Dakari, practice makes perfect. And how I met him, he actually came to my meet and greet. So I have these meet and greets in the community because I'm newly elected, <laughs> just an opportunity for everyone to get to know me. And he came up, he talked to me about his book, and I told him, I'm going to highlight you for Black History Month. And so after I did it, his dad came in and dropped the books off for me because I think it's just so important and inspirational because we hear so much in the media and every single day about young people um, and sad tragedies that are happening. And so when we see our young people doing amazing things and inspiring to live out their dream, that has to be highlighted with a, the same amount of enthusiasm, the same amount of reach. And so that was really important to me. And I love how he started a website too. And he's now lifting up other young authors. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not even a teenager yet. I know. I know he's he's remarkable. He's more accomplished than me. So <laughs> I'm trying to catch up. Oh yeah, careful. He's gonna be going after your seat pretty I know, soon. I know, I know. Groom him for it, get him ready. All right, another book you're recommending, All Boys Aren't Blue. And yes. we should say this has been a pretty controversial book. At least 29 school districts mm -hmm. have said, sorry, we're not going to have this book uh, in, in our library. It's lifting up uh, LGBTQ issues. It's mm -hmm. a black, uh, queer mm -hmm. uh, author. Um, why are you supporting this author and this book? Yeah, this was really important to me. When I was putting the list together, I said to myself, it has to include a black LGBTQ author. Um, being the first openly LGBTQ plus person elected um, to serve in Prince George's County myself, I feel like sometimes there's this disconnect, um, this feeling that you can't fully show up as yourself, especially black in spaces of politics because of religion, really because of the history of our culture. And so they're trying to erase it. And you see that with the banning of this book is this uncomfortability about talking about both being black and being LGBTQ or being black and being a woman. And that intersectionality is crucial. And so I felt like I had to make sure that I create space to elevate that conversation and to say it's okay. Um, it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to be open about it. It's okay to learn about it. Um, and that we need to be creating space to celebrate these authors just the same. And personally for you, 
how, how did you own that power? What inspired you? What what gave you the just the the strength mm -hmm. to come forward and talk about yourself personally? Honestly, my parents. Uh, my parents are super religious, and so that was a tension for me growing up. I felt like coming out. We see it time and time again that maybe our parents um, won't love us um, because of their religion. And the, the way my parents loved me and accepted me and empowered me made me never afraid to be open and bold and loud to other people um, and make sure that they felt that they're seen and that they're whole and that they're okay and that they're loved because I knew some people wouldn't have parents like me. Let me ask you about that because mm -hmm. that is unusual. If we yeah. go back, right, and, and, and start talking about black culture, mm -hmm. specifically black men, yeah. um, being gay, being open, mm -hmm. being accepted, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it has been really tough for the black mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you throw religion in there, mm -hmm. your parents were clearly progressive. Yeah. So why? Yeah, I think it was the way they grew up. I think they have always taught us, and this is before I came out, um, when we would have conversations about religion, they would say that heaven would be full of people from all different walks of life, um, different faiths. And so they always grew up telling me that everyone's differences are okay. And so sometimes people say that, um, but then when it's applied to their family, it's different. And so I had that fear, but what my parents did was they showed up exactly how they always said they would be, that mm. there was nothing that made me different. And so it allowed me to keep my faith and to be a full person. And that is gift. very rare um, yes, it is. for a lot of young people. Wow, I want to meet your parents. Yeah, they're I'm amazing. Everyone <laughs> voted for me because they love my mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> mom and dad. Clearly, they better be your advisors as well, yes. Dad. Yes. All right. Well, since we're talking about being so accepting and, and a tremendous leader, mm -hmm. John Lewis, of mm. course you picked, yes. picked his, his books yes. um, uh, to, to, to encourage people to read, to mm -hmm. read the March series. Yes. Uh, this is really great because it's a graphic novel. So some people... They you know, aren't interested in picking up a four or 500 page novel. And so I, this, I think, gives a lot of young people the opportunity to be engaged and intrigued and also learn history. And I have always um, been someone that is just inspired by activists and people that trace um, and put forward tough hard issues and stand at the forefront. And so I couldn't do this list without including someone that is someone I looked up to um, in politics and someone I aspired to be like in politics. Councilwoman, thank you for being with us and inspiring us on so many different levels. Thank I'm you. I'm gonna be watching you. Uh, I thank you the so much. The next presidential run, well, if know. not 2024. <laughs> <laughs> right, I appreciate you just having me and I really appreciate you just creating this space because it's so important um, because you reach so many people and you're having such an important conversation that's gonna penetrate so many people's homes. You always have space here. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.